Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. What I'm going to cover today is on how to interact with Git using IntelliJ. Why we are going to use IntelliJ for interacting with Git is because if you're going to use Java or Scala as a development language, you're predominantly going to use IntelliJ as a development IDE. So why do you need another tool or another interface which you need to master for interacting with Git, which is just a version control system? If you master the GUI that comes about with IntelliJ, we don't need to concentrate on the Git commands or the command line as well, which has a separate learning curve. Learning Git is very essential because you'll need to learn it or master it in such a way that you're actually able to interact with multiple team members and resolve issues pertaining to version control. And IntelliJ makes life easy for all of this. So with these things said, let's quickly get started on how to interact with Git using IntelliJ. So as a first step, uh, we'll go ahead and create a new project in IntelliJ. Uh, we can try to create a simple Java or a, a Scala project. Uh, so what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to create a new project. And okay, so let's create a Maven project. So the main idea or funda is to create new files and try to interact with Git using IntelliJ. So we are not worried whether it's going to be Java or Scala or any programming language or whatsoever. So let's uh, put the name as learning Git IntelliJ. Okay, so that's the project name I'm going to give. So it's going to create a new set of projects or a new project. Okay. So a basic Maven template project would be created. That's what is my understanding. So a basic project with the pom.xml has been created and we'll try to add in some Java files and see how we can interact with GitHub. Okay. So as a first step to communicate with Git using IntelliJ, we'll need to expose this project to the GitHub. Okay. So for that, there's a command here. So if you go to the VCS menu, there's something called as import into version control. Okay, so there you can just click on create Git repository. So once you do that, it's going to ask the same thing and uh, it's going to like create a Git repo for us. If you saw it at the start, there wouldn't have been a master branch here. So if you rewind the video, you would have found that there wouldn't have a there wouldn't have been a master branch created here. So now once we exposed our project to Git, a new master branch has been created. So we'll see what is a local branch and what is a remote branch, all of the details a little later. So now a new project has been created and it has been mapped with Git. Okay, so now our objective is to add new files into this repository. Okay, so we'll see about these things, local changes, console, and the log part. So these three things are the important aspects that we need to learn when we are going to interact with Git using IntelliJ. So let's go ahead and quickly create a couple of files, uh, one each in the uh, main as well as in the test folders. Okay, so like we'll create a, a dev class. Okay, so this uh, warning or alert will come in where IntelliJ will take on the responsibility of adding your files to Git. So that you, is usually done using the git add command. So you can either ignore this and choose to add it manually. I usually do that. Uh, so I haven't I haven't added this file to the Git yet. Okay, we'll see on what is add and what is commit, etc. A little later. So we'll quickly go ahead and create another class here. Dev test class. Okay, we'll try to add. I'm not going to going into the concept of Java, etc. But uh, we'll try to just put in a PSVM and shout okay dev class okay just just for like learning sake we'll try to put the same method inside the test okay so we have two files okay so two files have been created we'll see how to interact or check in these files okay so the first option is like go into this console uh, into this perspective so if you go into this perspective there is this concept called change list where you see all of the files that are available and all of the files that are ready to be checked in okay there's something called as unversion files 
which will just uh, show us all of the files which are ready to be checked in and are not added to the git repository so for you to check in a file or commit a file to the github repository you first need to add it okay so that needs to be done here so you need to add this file so this is the file that we are going to add it to the git repository go to git and click on add here so then it will move into the change list okay so the class that is ready to be checked in or the files that are ready to be checked in we'll do the same process here git add okay so two files are ready to be checked in okay so we are having two files ready to be checked in here okay so if you go ahead and see the console so you'll see a huge amount of commands running so it's it's you can ignore these credential helper and these flags and if you see the basic interaction that we do using the command line is taken care of by IntelliJ over here so it's just doing git add ignore errors another flag and our file path as simple as that so these two commands are executed now and let's quickly see how to commit it into our local repository which is the master the master branch so now so this is the log i'll come into that a little later so select these two files and right click commit once you do a commit you get this window where you can perform all uh, these kind of operations like reformatting code rearranging code i'm not going to touch any of it you can explore it for yourselves a little later we'll add our first commit initial commit and there's a commit and push op option which i'll talk about a little later push is nothing but pushing into your uh, remote repository so i'll come into that now okay so now if you see in our master our changes have been committed again for you to verify you can go to this uh, console and see what is a commit command that has been executed so the git commit the file name the message and what are the files that have been checked in will all come in this console okay and for your information it's read only so just to keep track of what are the commands that are getting executed and now if you see there's the initial commit log that has been given here and this helps us to identify in each commit what are the files that have been changed so if you see here there's a brief description about the change who had done it etc and where is the head whether it's in which branch etc so all of these are pretty easy when you use intellij so that's what i wanted to cover today so now what you see is a local branch version so the main objective is to push your changes to the remote repository where other team members can interact with your git repository so that we'll be looking at now okay so click on this master branch okay there's this local branches there's an option to create a new branch we can do that a little later click on the branches name push it okay once you do the push it will just give you this option when you are going to push in any tags you need to check it we'll do that a little later but now you need to define a remote so where exactly are you going to push your changes uh, so your web url your github account your repository url has to be mentioned here for doing that we'll click on this and it's asking for a url for this we'll need to create our own repository in our github account and give that particular url here we'll quickly see about that process now so this is my repository so if you go here uh, go to the root you can just click on this new command new repository and just uh, give the same name as we've given here learning git intellij you can give a different name but i'm following the same name So now it's done so i'm going to just create a public repository give it a small description and create repository so now as we've created the repository if you click on this link you can quickly uh, get this url so this is the url we are concerned about so this will uh, help us to uh, have a relation between our local branch and our remote branch so I'm just going to paste it here. I've just copied using this uh, button here and I'm going to paste it here. And now it will ask for a 
our credentials so now it's going to give us a one final chance of checking which files are there and what are the changes that you've done okay so now i'm going to go ahead and do a push okay so now we are getting an error here okay so for this what is actually there is like github has removed the authentication access okay uh, like using the passwords okay uh, username and password way of accessing intellij from git has been removed or any uh, repository for that matter for this you'll need to create a token for yourselves for getting access to the remote repository we'll need to either give our username and password credentials or a personalized token so the username and password methods were removed as of august 10th or 12th or uh, 2021 so for that reason we are going to go ahead and create a personalized token which we can use for logging in so for that we'll need to go into settings go to developer settings okay and then there are three options here for that i'm going to use the personalized access tokens and create a token here uh, just say like uh, uh, learning git intellij i'm going to just generate it for our project it's it's a global generation that can be done over a period of seven days or till whatever you can even uh, give it a no expiry date but i'm going to give just seven days just for and select all of the scopes uh, whether to check in like workflow management writing packages deleting uh, all of the admin access everything i'm going to give i'm not going to leave any stone unturned i'm going to give all of the access here once you do that you can click on generate token a personalized token will be given copy the token just keep it handy copy the token and keep it in a safe place you won't be able to see it again okay so you when when you're done with your work or if you want don't want access you can delete this token but now since we are going to work on it i'm going to copy it in a safe place and then use it in our intellij ide so for using it in intellij what you need to do is like you need to go to file settings and in settings you have to go to version control okay in version control go to github okay so my old credentials have expired so i'm going to create a new one uh, just be uh, wary of this option here use token we are not going to use the username and password as it's disabled uh, now uh, they are expecting either the two-factor authentication or a personalized token so i'm going to give this personalized token and login okay So since I've already used a token, if you're doing it for the first time, you can use that approach. I've already used the approach. So uh, this is the option I'll need to follow. Hope you're aware of that. Uh, so if you're going to add a new user, you can use the approach of clicking on the plus button. If you're an existing user and if your login or token has expired, you need to follow this approach. Okay, just uh, make note of that point. So now the new token has been generated and it has been authenticated. We'll just apply it. And now if we go ahead and do a push, okay, click on the master, click on master, do a push and just verify your classes for one last time and do a push. Yep, good. So the changes are pushed to our origin. We'll see what is an origin quickly. We'll just verify where is our project. So this is our project. So cool. So our initial check-in is done, the source folder, the main Java, everything is present. So we've successfully created a repository using GitHub and interacted it with using IntelliJ. Okay, so our initial check-in is successful. So next, what we need to do is like we need to check various options like how you're going to make up uh, changes like if I'm going to add a new file here or a new line of code and added this so how how the change list or how the behavior is like how modifications need to be done we can see here so once you touch this your change would come here it comes as part of the default change list okay so if you're working on multiple aspects of a project you can create a new change list say you're working on a logging 
you are working on data processing so all of these things like it's just a way of segregating your files okay just before you check in like there's a way to segregate these things okay it's it's similar to stashing i'll come to the uh, c- come to that a little later but a change list is something is like uh, what are the files that you're going to keep handy for the later check in okay uh, so i'll come to stashing a little later so now we made a modification in this single file and we are going to check in this file it's as simple as just check this click on right click on it commit file the same old commits uh, same old uh, window comes in and i just put it commit to just commit that's it so now the commit has been done so the understanding of a commit and a push is very essential here so once you do a commit your changes would go to this local master branch okay so there's something called as a remote master branch the remote master branch is nothing but this folder so whatever changes say like if two or three folks are working on and if he's if he or she is going to commit some changes into your remote you need to make sure that all of those changes come in here as well okay so what we need to do now is like we need to push our changes again okay to the remote okay so now click on the local branch and do a push again just verify if this is a change that you did absolutely yes you're going to do a push absolutely easy now the change we'll see whether it's there all of the changes are done here so now we've seen how to interact with git using intellij and how to add a file to the git repository and to have uh, and how to like make changes to the file that you have added so all of those things are done now so now let's say like you and a couple of other folks are starting to work on this project okay so then you uh, the suggested approach is to not allow you to check in directly into your master branch so the approach is to each of the individuals have to create a new branch and then raise something called as a pull request okay so we'll see that process right now so now i'm going to create a new branch and the convention i follow is like something called feature slash ashwin one okay so so this is a first feature branch so this is going to be a feature that i'm going to add i'm going to create a branch and i'm going to check it out so once you create a branch that branch would be checked out automatically so now you have two local branches master and feature so your next step as you would have guessed it would be to push your local branch to the remote that can be done using click on this local branch and push it just check this part again now once you do a push go ahead and check your do a reload now the feature branch is added here okay so this is ashwin working on it okay so there's another way as well there's another way in which you can work as well say like i have another account i'll try to log in using another account using another browser going to log in to github let me log in through my stream to learn account here so let me try to log in through my stream to learn account here so i've created an account using this user id okay now i'm going to try to access this uh, repository from uh, my stream to learn account okay So now I see the repo here. So the next process that I talked about apart from creating a feature branch is something called as forking, okay? So forking is nothing but creating your own version of the repository that has been created by the actual code owner or a repository owner. Say you're working on a um a development team and you've been given access to a repository. The first step that you can do is like do something called as fork when you do fork what happens what happens is like uh, github creates a repository that pertains to your user okay so if you see here the user that 
actually created this uh, repository is Ashwin Shakti and now I am interacting using my stream to learn account which has its own uh, versions of the code okay so that multi-user so it's a way in which like multi-users can work on it so you can create your own branch here and then uh, have your own versions of code be be before you submit it for code review etc so it's like having your own copy of the code base okay as, uh, as simple as that so what i'm going to do now is like i'm going to create um, a change uh, or create a, a branch okay create a branch using this um, account stream to learn account so since i've configured intellij with my account in uh, the gui i'll just add a file here okay just to interact with uh, or like show multiple ways of interacting with multiple files so what i'm going to do here is like i'm going to add a file here or modify an existing file so i'll create a new branch stream to learn okay i'm also going to show how to create a pull request okay so now i've create a br created a branch called stream to learn and edit this file okay so i'm going to quickly this is not the actual way to do it but i'm just going to do it for showing you the difference of raising a pull request uh check in from stream to learn and I'm just modifying it as stream to learn okay so now I'm updating this class and I'm committing the changes to my branch so since there will usually in your development environment you'll not be able to check in code directly to your master branch okay so what happens is like now I added some commits here okay so i added a commit directly here and i'm going to raise a pull request so that i'm going to request a review from ashwin shakti who is actually the repository owner and uh, try to push in my changes to the master branch okay so once you do that once you go to this place it will just show you a stream to learn had reason pushed a branch we'll just click on compare and pull request so once you do that it will just show you're able to merge your changes so you can just raise a pull request okay so once you raise a pull request here what happens is like if ashwin shakti is going to refresh this pull request you see there's a new pull request that has been raised stream to learn wants to merge one commit into ashwin shakti master from his own forked version so this is how multi multi user collaboration takes place so here our objective is to go ahead and review the code so, so you can just show comments, you can review changes, uh, add uh, as a code reviewer, you can just um, just give in some comments and ask him to review or now like I'm just saying like good coding and just I'm going to approve this commit. So if you add a comment and if you uh, submit review, what happens is like that person will actually see what changes he needs to make. The other person so now if you see like there's good coding or make some changes so I, I can actually put in some meaningful comment saying that make some changes in dev class so he can work on the change and he can make that change and then recommit again so let's do something like so he's going to work on this changes again so he's going to go to his own branch okay he's going to work on his own branch so even though one commit has been done so let's say like i asked him to remove the plus symbol okay so let's let's see here let's see here in this code i made some changes okay so i want to remove this plus symbol so that's the comment i had given just imagine that i've given him a comment to remove this plus and replace it with the dash so he has to go ahead and in his own id he has to do it and do the commit process as we did i'm doing it for learning sake okay uh add it the dash in place of the plus okay 
and he's going to come it directly to the, to the branch and now if you go here so a new comment would be added to the pull request so his review comment has been updated so the other user which is team to learn has worked on the review comment and he has put in his changes now if you go and see there'll be two comments the first one was a simple comment the second is like he has added a dash or he has removed the plus and added this dash okay you see those changes now ashwin has a chance to approve this pull request okay so i accept this change i and i approve this change to come forward into my master branch so now there's something called as now if you see like it will allow you to do a merge pull request or a squash and merges but what i follow is like when you do a create a merge commit it will do this pull request commit along with a merge commit okay if you see here so let's do this for this instance now i'm going to create a merge pull request so what happens now is like if you go ahead and refresh our ide here go to the log now to update the changes that have been done so now stream to learn has committed some changes okay now to see those changes in your repository or in your console what you need to do is like go to your branch or go to your master branch and uh, click on update so once you did the update all of the changes would be coming here so what i told was like this is the only commit that should have been taken place after the pull request so this merge pull request which is just a code review that i've done so i am not the user who did the actual code this is just a merge so to avoid this commit what you need to do is something called as squash and merge okay so that's the understanding you should have so let's do another example here so let stream to learn work on it and edit it once more okay added more changes commit it so more changes have been added so now if you go to the pull request you can do the pull request so you need to okay so it may went to the wrong repo okay so now what you need to do is like go to pull request create a new pull request and make sure that your base repository is ashwin shakti learning github and master and your thing is stream to learn so now if you see there is a new commit added update dev class okay so our new commit has done make sure this left hand side most almost automatically this will happen but uh, when you refresh and when you log in for the first time but uh, if it's not happening just follow this approach on the left there has to be the base branch on the right you have to do your own branch give your own branch's name where you have committed your latest change now you've got only one commit here and you're going to create a pull request create it and now ashwin is going to see the pull request So let's go to the pull request here. So one thing was approved and closed. If you see the last pull request, it has been approved and it has been merged into master and it has been closed. Now you have one more pull request that has come in. Now I'm going to review the changes again. And now if you see, there's this option called squash and merge. Just for seeing sake, we'll see what is the change. Absolutely there. Now we go to the conversation. Don't click on this merge pull request. click on squash and merge and then once you select it you have to click it click on it again so now go to your intellij and do a refresh of this file and uh, it's going to fetch all of this files that have been checked in newly so now if you see there's only one commit that has been done in your origin master so the difference between using a merge pull request and a squash and merge can be clearly understood here so once you came and refreshed your page here you are able to see that or once you did a fetch of the uh, latest changes from master you are able to see only one commit which is actually the best desired result you do not need multiple commits for 
a single pull request so my suggestion is always to go ahead and use squash and merge okay so that's one thing we have learned now we've seen how to do how to raise a pull request and how to do a squash and merge and how an interaction between multiple users takes place and how code review takes place as well so these three to four concepts have been covered now so now let's go to the next step so the next step is like creating a stash so we'll see what is the use of a stash so let's quickly see what stashing is all about okay so let's quickly create a new branch here uh, let's name it a stash branch stash branch so we'll name it in the feature branch section itself and now if you see the branch would be created in your local repo okay so you need to push it to your remote so once you do the push, uh, the repository will be pushed to the origin. Okay, so the origin is nothing but. So if you want to see what is your origin, all of these things are all about. So it's called master. So this URL, if you want to see your uh, Git origin URL. So what you need to do is like, uh, sorry, go to Git repository view remotes if you see this there you can add multiple versions as well so if you're forking a repository and you're working on your forked version you can add that as origin and this one can be added as an upstream okay since i'm working with a single repo here i'm making it as origin so there's a way in which so if you're working on a forked version you can make that as origin and the version that you forked from can be made as an upstream okay so now what i'm going to do is like see what is stashing all about okay say now you're working on the stash branch okay and you added some code like uh, um, so you added around 10 lines of code okay so you added so many lines of code so so many lines of code has been added so what what if like if you want to check out uh, your master branch if you want to create another branch and start working on some other changes you don't want to run the risk of losing this by jet reset or like your uh, branch getting corrupted or something like that so what you do is like uh, previously uh, before version control came into the picture you would take a backup of this folder and put it into another folder put it into some date and put it like that okay so just put it into a folder and save it as a backup so similar to that so this particular thing if you if you want to save this file at its current form uh, you can do something like um, stash go to git go to repository click on stash changes and here you can say my stash one Okay, whatever just put my stash one and create it so once you do a stash what happens is like the file would be restored to its repo stage so which is like your uh, compare it with the version so it will mostly remain unchanged so there's no no change so contents are identical so it will restore it to its current repo version so this particular revision would be restored so how do you restore that file so now you've started working you checked out master and you started working out uh, on those files you finished everything and you want to continue your work okay on your uh, uh, stash branch you're going to check out check it out again okay so after you do that there's something called unstash uh go to git where is that and stash changes uh, so this is one thing so this is like your stash that you saved you can view you can view what is the file that you're looking at what are the difference that you want to apply to so our our changes are safe and sound here now just click on this and click on apply stash now what happens is like just copy paste now all of your code is restored and you can continue working on it so rather than doing a backup like copying pasting etc or run the risk of losing your existing code and if you want to quickly do a bug fix and then come back to your dev work you can either check in this to your uh, uh, public repo or your remote repo uh, and then come back or this is another option rather than uh, making your branch advanced by an index your head might be changed uh, an unnecessary commit which is uh, you might be in the middle of something so in those scenarios you can use this uh, feature called as stash so that's stash for now
okay so now we've seen stash as well so now let's quickly so we have done the stash branch so uh, we've pushed the stash branch so let's see on how to delete this so how do you delete a branch so you created a branch uh, did some changes and now you think that these changes are not required at all so what you need to do is like delete a cha uh, delete a branch for deleting a branch you should switch to another branch say master okay so go to another branch and then go here and click on stash branch then you'll get this delete branch okay so this option would be coming here uh, if you if you observe that if you go ahead and check out stash branch again and if you go and see uh, if a delete branch comes in it wouldn't come in so if you're if you're pointed or if you're working on your current branch that branch cannot be deleted you need to switch to another branch check it out and then you can delete your current branch so now this local branch has been deleted okay and you can also delete the remote branch like this so you can either click that option or if you miss that clicking option once the local branch is deleted you can always go here and click on this and delete it okay so there are two ways in which you can delete a remote branch once after you delete your local branch the other after you go into this jet branches window okay so now we've seen how to delete a branch as well so now let's look at the other use case like the merging from the master branch into a current branch say i'm working on this feature branch called feature one in the evening i've done some code but not on this say like i've just modified the pom.xml and i've kept it for checking in but say like another change has come in through the master say like someone like stream to learn has checked in through the um, raising a pull request format so he sent this particular change into the master branch so how do we get this latest into our feature branch and continue with our changes and then we continue to commit our changes and raise a pull request so let's quickly have a look at it okay so our branch is at this head which is feature one so if you see this our head is here okay now what we need to do is like we need to merge the master into our branch so how do we do that you need to go to this option here click on master and look at this option merge into current our current branch is feature one we go to master click on this and we see the changes have come in so the changes from the master has been merged into our feature branch so just for verification we'll just do a fetch again so no changes here all the changes have been fetched in okay and we'll quickly check if there is any local changes there seems to be no local changes but only our pom.xml so what we need to do is like we can just add our uh, form.xml okay add form.xml and commit our changes so we've taken the latest so in this way if we do it in this way we will not have we'll not have any merge conflicts during our pr our pull request so we've raised this uh, we've created this branch we've made a check in So after committing the file, we need to push the branch to remote. Okay, so we need to push it to remote. Uh, if you see, so the update from the master will be here as well. So the update from the master will be here as well. So all, all the commits that are as part of the uh, stream to learns commits will be coming in as part of this merge request so what we need to do is like once we do a push all of our changes will go to our uh, feature okay we'll raise we'll refresh the page okay so now we see our commit so the branch now will come in sync with the master and if you go to the pull request if you go to the pull request you can go ahead and raise a new pull request now compare it with the base master this is our new feature branch We'll just see that there is only one commit so this commit has pom.xml so this pom.xml is going to have this value and we are going to create a pull request only one file has been added and we create it and we can quickly do a squash and merge so once we do a squash and merge the pom.xml will be added to our master so now if you 
do an update here where is a log so go here do an update you see this is a feature branch now the master is merged with only one file so we didn't we didn't mess around with the changes that came in from stream to learn okay so now we were able to merge the master's changes into our branch and do a change with respect to this so we'll go into another use case okay so now we managed to check in a file which didn't have changes from both the persons who were working okay so now uh, what i'm going to do is like i'm going to ask stream to learn to make a change into master okay i'm going to ask him to make a change in master and i'll be working on it parallelly okay so let me quickly add some changes here so i'm going to ask him to make some changes so my changes are going to be only these things okay so what i'm going to do is our stream to learn to add three more lines of code here and put it into master and i'm going to continue working on my feature branch let's see how things go and if the merge request happens automatically so let's uh stream to learn to make some changes so let's go here so it says open but uh, refresh hasn't happened okay perfect so now let's ask him to go ahead and make a change here yeah check in from stream to learn change one two four five six okay so he, let's say he followed the same process he followed the process of raising a pr and committing the changes now he has committed to the master okay so imagine that he's done it via the master okay okay so like uh, we are going to create a pull request okay and there is no conflicts so since, since he is not the owner of the repo he will not be allowed to do the pull request or approve the pull request i'll again go to the pull request here i'll go here and now i'll get the option of squashing and merging it okay so now i got the squash and merge so now things are fine so all things are merged from stream to learn into the master let's do a refresh here so stream to learn has worked here okay so he has played with this file so he has added two more lines okay so now imagine that i have not taken the latest i have not merged into the merged master into my feature branch now okay even though i merged it here and added the pom.xml and these two are in sync i have not done this process here okay now i start working on this code here this is feature one i don't have this change as you see i don't have this change one two so let me put change ashwin shakti and i'll put another okay so let's put our own code here change one two four five six ashwin shakti okay so these are the things that confuse people who start up with git okay seven eight nine so i'm going slow use case by use case just for our understanding so now i've changed this okay and i am in this branch i am in this branch i need to commit this change let's go to the local changes okay we'll see what is the unchanged one so these are the ones that are differing from my feature branches head so these will be allowed to be committed so let me go ahead and commit it into my feature branch so now i've committed the change and i'm going to push it to my remote repository so if it's not pushed if it's not pushed it will show this arrow if the master is not updated it's going to show this arrow let's quickly push it to the master So my change has been pushed. So now if you see that arrow would be gone. So I think master is just asking us to update even though we've done it here. So now let's look at the log. So now you see our dev class is here 
where it's not having these changes okay so my 789 has gone in so where is the 789 so this 789 i should have used another commit let's let's edit the image or commit message so this is a way to edit the commit message okay just go to the i i accidentally committed with the same message so this is another use case <laughs> so we'll just add say adding new line from feature one okay so now i added a new line so this is going to be message changed okay so this has to be pushed it's asking us to merge so now it's going to be merged and the changes are pushed so we'll see the commit so this was the commit that was done we'll quickly go here and see in our feature branch what is the state so now our changes are there okay so our changes are there okay just ignore the alerts that came about with the feature branch okay so now our commits now if you go to git go to the log see this part here so it has merged our changes are present okay now what i need to do is like i'm going to raise a pr i'm going to raise a pr with my changes from feature one but i've not taken the latest from master which is actually this one four five six which is actually the changes from stream to learn so now what i'm going to do is raise a pr from feature new pull request base master this is feature one okay so i'm going to add all of this create a pull request now you got this error can't automatically merge you see why is this problem because we didn't take the latest so that's the reason you should be taking the latest you go ahead and create a pull request you go ahead and create a pull request but it will still show up these issues now you need to resolve the conflicts now it will ask us to merge these things okay you need to verify which are the changes you need okay so now you need to go here remove this so change from stream to learn has to be kept so this is a change from our end so stream to learn changed changes are there our changes are there okay so now just keep it as mark as a result commit merge so now what happens is like we'll be allowed to squash and merge so this is the exact use case that comes in prod so how do you merge from a feature branch or from a master into your feature branch and sometimes people do changes uh, simultaneously where you'll be having these kind of issues okay so if you want we can look at this use case again so what happened was like now we'll do a refresh now if you see feature and master are in sync now if you go to now our classes here is like having like this 789 now if i go here it's going to have both 12456 789 and 12 all of the four lines okay so now let's quickly merge into our feature branch merge into current you got it so now if you see again the confusion would have taken place you need to clear out the confusion make sure that all of the lines are present and do a comment this is the process you should have followed at the start before we raise the pull request you got it so now you need to merge it and do a commit 
So to avoid this, there's an option called rebase. Since we already merged this using the front end, we, we already merged it using the web page. So there we did the merge using the utility given there. So if you want to avoid that, what you need to do is like you need to click on this. So we'll do a, we'll do a reset. We'll do a reset of it. do a rollback so now our changes are pertaining to this even though it is there feature is still here so now you need to merge with this so how do you do that so what you need to do we need to make sure these changes are in our local okay so we need to go to master and update okay we've updated the branch now we'll rebase now we'll do a rebase merge or rebase current onto selected yeah so now we have an option of merging the master so the master if you see here has all of the changes so our change doesn't have stream to learn changes one two four five six we need to accept value here we need to accept the right you can either click on accept right or use the arrows like this so we don't need these values we'll just do this change like this and click on apply or you can do undo and click on accept right so all of the changes would be there so we've accepted all of the changes from master So now we've got all of the features rebased from master into our feature. Now if you refresh, the values from the master have been rebased on feature. So all of the changes would be here. So now if you make any changes and do a commit, let's do a commit here uh, saying that after after rebase now only this should differ from our master okay so we'll do a commit So we've committed our changes only these two should be going in now so now we'll see we want to push it so now all of the changes have been merged and pushed let's go ahead and check it here now we need to go ahead and raise another pull request so now we pushed, let's go to the comments, we'll see, okay, sorry, so we are referring to the master branch, sorry about that, we'll go to feature, go to pull request, new pull request, base and feature, so now all the changes from the master will be here okay and now you see the change only our current change would be reflecting okay so now if we do a squash and merge and do an update here go to log 
to an update perfect so now the update from feature and master has taken place and we have updated now both feature and master are in sync now so this is how the entire life cycle of merge delete etc rebase etc work so hopefully you would have understood the situation of a rebase so why a rebase is needed so that pretty much covers all the life cycles of what you need to perform using a git repository you can revisit this repository or this video once again so now we've done all of the changes okay and we've committed the changes to master okay say like you want to have a version or a checkpoint here say you're going to release this to a customer end customer what do you do you do a tag and do a release okay so you need to create something called as a tag here after that you'll be able to do a release okay so as it says releases are powered by tagging specific points of history in a repository they are great for marking release points like v1.0 we'll use the same thing as a tag we'll do release hyphen v dot v1.0 okay we'll go to master check out master okay so we'll do create tag uh, we'll make it as release hyphen v1.0 so now we've created a tag we need to push it to the remote we'll go to master push it and here you need to check this keep it as all and push it so once you do that your repository would be pushed your tag has been pushed to origin now we'll quickly go here since we didn't see any tags here we'll quickly see a tag here cool so now we've made a first release so after doing the full cycle of the changes in our product we are ready to do our first milestone so what we need to do is like we need to go here after the tag has been pushed check all whether all of the features are there and go to releases and click on draft a new release okay so you can either go ahead and click on these options uh tag a new version target master using this approach or follow the approach i told you you can put the tag version here and do it or the easier approach is to create the tag using intellij go here click on the three dots here click on create release and here your tag has already been marked and we can put release version v1.0 learning kit so this is how you release a product okay so all of this can be taken care of using jenkins and continuous integration etc but this is a very good way of releasing a tag okay so you can add all of the use cases like uh, any test cases you've done any sonar cube matrix all of this can be included here what it does is it will create a zip version of your whole uh, uh, file structure and uh, keep it as a reference so that in case something runs bad or if you want to revert this is a checkpoint i'll go ahead and publish this release now you see i've released the product and it has a source code that can be downloaded so it can be downloaded okay so this is our first major release and uh, you can always go ahead and delete it or modify it but it's it's a way of checkpointing so i guess we've covered most of the points that i wanted to cover today so i've done it in using the front end okay so if you want to still keep track of the logs or the back end you can always click on the console okay so the console would always be keeping track of all of the commands that are executed okay so it's going to push it's going to check out it's going to fetch it's going to fetch again add push stash so all of the commands can be found here so i've given you an easier option okay so i've given you an easier option of looking ahead using the log and doing all of these operations the entire life cycle of a jet process in a production environment has been covered here so right from initializing a git repository then we added some files to the git repository we collaborated with another user then we made sure that a pull request had been raised uh, we reviewed some other person's code we added some comments then we actually approved the pull request we made sure that the pull request got merged and went into the head of the master 
Then we played around with another feature branch, made sure that it didn't conflict, it had conflicts, then resolved those conflicts, did a rebase, and then we worked on stashes, then we did a delete branch, and then finally, after all of this process was successful, we did a tag of the release or tag of the branch. So after the tagging was done, we were able to go ahead and do a release. So a release is done to make sure that a zipped version of all of the code is executed or it can be shared with any other person. So if you have a mail configured, if you have an email configured to your GitHub, a release would be sent to your email. Okay, so that, that's how good a release is. So hopefully you like my videos. Please keep liking my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Please add your valuable comments as well if in case I missed anything as part of the life cycle and if you want anything else to be covered, it will be awesome for me so that I can put in another part 2 version of this video. I tried my best to cover all of the use cases that are possible using multiple users. Uh, just point out if anything was missed or anything was wrongly interpreted in comments. Uh, waiting for your review guys. Uh, thank you. Signing off. Ashwin. Please keep subscribing. Thanks again. Bye bye.